my name is Rose Réjoui, and um, I would like to read uh, a section from Marie Vieux Chauvet's 1968 novel, Love, Anger, Madness. It's a trilogy. It's really three novellas, um, three separate novellas, Love, Anger, and Madness. And um, before I read it, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I've decided to pair it with the images that you are seeing. This is an excerpt from the theater of um, AMI. It's a Haitian theater company and they make plays about everyday situations in Haiti and, uh, and they televise them and they post them on YouTube. Uh, they, um, they are really wonderful. They are incredibly, you know, the plays are incredibly wonderful. The actors are wonderful. Um, some of the plays are funny. So some of the plays are tragic. And what's wonderful about it is that it takes the everyday life of Haitians as its subject. And, and it really inscribes itself in the same genealogy as the work of Marie Chauvet. And in fact, the man you see standing in the white shirt looking through the book is actually holding the book I'm going to read from. He's holding Marie Vieux Chauvet's trilogy, Love, Anger, Madness. And the reason he's holding this book is because at the end of this scene, he, he's going to have a monologue. And in the monologue, he's going to ask, have you seen my future? I'm looking for my future. Have you seen it? And I think that's exactly the question that uh, Marie Vichauve's work is asking. And um, the section I'm going to read is about standing in line at a lawyer's office. And this is exactly what these people are doing here. They're, they're in line trying to get the paperwork done. And uh, so this, without any further ado, that's what I'm going to do. This section is from anger. And um, one way to set it up is to think of Kafka's parable when one of his protagonists is waiting at a gate and tries to bribe the gatekeeper uh, and successfully, and when he, when the, when the protagonist is an old man and asks the gatekeeper, "Is there anything I could have got, done to, to get you to open the gate?" The gatekeeper says no. And when he asks, "Well, why did you take the bribe?" The gatekeeper says, "Well, I wanted to make sure you didn't omit anything." And so there's there is a Kafkaesque, um, tragic aura around the passage I'm going to read. The father is going to see a lawyer to bring money to one of the men in black, one of the Tonton Makut, who is holding his daughter hostage. And he's doing it without convictions. Everybody who's in the lawyer's office is there without convictions. No one actually believes that the lawyer is going to be able to help them. All right. The father was caught unawares by the blood throbbing in his veins. His ears were hot, but he mastered himself and went upstairs to get the money. Outside, he calmed himself, and his features once again returned to their nice, calm, mask-like stillness. He ran into two of his colleagues, who started whispering once they caught sight of him, and he waved to them without getting a response. It wasn't yet eight, and the lawyer's doors were still closed. He walked past them, not wanting to seem impatient, and came back 15 minutes later to find the guard opening them. The guard didn't seem to recognize him. He wanted to follow the guard inside, but the trembling old man who had left the room when his patience had run out last time now jumped in front of him and pushed him aside, sneaked in first. A bit out of breath, the old man rushed to a chair and was about to sit down when he saw the guard and changed his mind. 
So he remained standing, all sheepish, hard pressed against his stomach. Five of the clients arrived and got behind him into a tight queue, nose to nape. You'd think they were in a penitentiary, thought Louis Normil, who had settled himself comfortably into a chair. He thought these people were clients who he thought these people were clients who couldn't pay the lawyer in any other way besides flattery. And he felt the money in his pocket with satisfaction. So he was more than a little shocked when he saw the toothless old man pulling out of his wallet a, a, a $20 bill, which he slipped the guard with a conniving wink. The peephole opened and an eye and a knife slithered into its frame, as if awaiting the signal. The guard opened the door and the old man went in. The others executed a sharp ballet step forward that brought them closer to the guard. And I wanna say that I just really love that last sentence. And I think if that's the reason I've chosen this passage. I'll read it again. The others, uh, those who, those, the, the people who were behind the old man executed a sharp ballet step forward that brought them closer to the guard. And I think that image speaks really well to the desperation of, of people standing in a line, yet knowing that there is no hope. 